Hi everybody, this is Jeanette Oatman and this, we're going to have another encaustic art experiment here. Um, anyone who's into encaustic art will know, you know, it's, it's pretty expensive, a lot of art stuff is. This card here, um, which is what you're supposed to use, costs 70 pence for one sheet of A4 and as you can see, you know, it's quite a shiny glossy um, finish to it. Here. I have a cheap piece of just ordinary A4 white card. I brought in a multi-pack. Um, I can't remember how much it cost, but I think I got it from Poundland. So um, you get lots of sheets there for, for the price you'd pay for one sheet elsewhere. I've also uh, got a bit of cardboard here which many of us just throw into the bin and I thought well let's see if it will actually work on that. I've also got um, a piece of um, card again which I've just folded over. Um, oh no sorry no I apologize. This, this is actually a greeting card. I bought a set of greeting cards so one packet. Um, from Hobby Craft, so you've got uh, 10 cards and envelopes um, in A6, which is already pre-folded for you. Um, make lovely cards, it'd be brilliant if we can use encaustic card on that. If not, if it doesn't work, you can get A6 card and you could glue it on, but I thought we'd a try and see if we can do it directly onto the paper. My cough, sorry. Um, I've also um, got a piece of card which as you can see um, just had cereal bars in it. One side is glossy and one side isn't. So I've cut two pieces and I thought I would try joining caustic art on the um, matte side of it. And also on the other one, I would do it on the shiny side to see if that works. Um, to me, I can't understand any reason why it wouldn't work, but sometimes you've got to have a go to find out. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So um, let's start, shall we? So obviously we know it already works on the A4, uh, you know, the proper encaustic paper. So rather than um, use a big piece of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going, I've, I've got a bit of the ordinary card folded up and um, I've got the proper encaustic card there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do it on each piece so that we can see what kind of difference there is. So um, I've got my craft iron on the lowest setting um, so um, let's have a look and see what happens shall we so I'm going to try on the this paper first I've got lots of kitchen roll next to me so I can clean my iron as well um, I'm going to use a dark colour because I want to see, I think it will show up better if it hasn't covered properly if I use it on the dark so I'm going to make sure I get a lot on here. Um, see, you've got lovely colour there. But just so we can have some contrast as well, let's have, um, let's have some lovely ready in there as well. So I've got it quite loaded up quite well there. So let's see what happens when I put it onto the paper. Let's get a little bit more on there, I think. Let's have a little bit more. Oops. <laughs> get slippery. Let me sure I've got quite a bit on there. Now, what we all love with when we're working on the encaustic art, we all love to be able to... Um, manipulate it just using my 
paper on the floor on the on the um, table that I put down to um, clean iron there. Right, I'm going to use um, this bit blue here because I want to see if I can. Because this is dry now already. I want to see. I want to see how it's going to work. Didn't really show up that much, but that's okay. I'm gonna have some fun with this because I really want to see what's going on. It looks like I've got a big wave there, doesn't it? Make sure I clean my iron off properly this time. Just a piece of cheap kitchen roll. You don't need expensive stuff. But you will go through quite a bit of it during encaustic art. Oh, I want to see if I can... This might make it go a bit murky, but let's see what happens. Let's just do a straight iron across. See what happens. There. Makes the rest look a little bit underwater, doesn't it? <laughs> it's great fun, you know, using all of this. Right, okay. So then, when you've worked with encaustic art and it is dried on your paper, you get a clean piece of um, kitchen roll because as you can see that is that's quite um, a matte finish to me this is the test if this paper has worked well or not because um, on encaustic paper you give it a rub give it a buff and it all starts shining lovely gives it a gloss finish but remember you know um, if you um, rub too much cause friction, friction causes heat so it will change your design. So there you go. Now I am quite pleased with that. I think if you're just starting out and you haven't got um, any bigger paper than the tiny little A6s, um, I think it worked quite well but if you, I don't know if you look in really close there, but I can see tiny little um, bumps in there um, so I'm not quite sure if that's because the coating wasn't as good I, I, I really don't know um, but I personally think it's really good cheap alternative if you're just trying out I think when you do it on the encaustic art paper when you buff it it's a bit shinier than what you've got here so, okay, so that, that's experiment number one. I will take a close-up picture of that later for you. So now I've got my biscuit cards, okay? All right. So I'm going to do one on one side and one on the shiny side. So I'm going to start on the shiny side first. And um, what colour should I use? Obviously, I don't want yellow, so I'm going to go for one of these dark ones. I'm going to be purple. I'm actually going to use it quite a lot because obviously this is quite a big area that needs covering. And let's see what happens. It does feel a bit runny to me at the moment. I suppose if you've got the the right piece of cardboard underneath um, you can have some wonderful different colours coming through which you wouldn't have had otherwise at the moment I can see a little bit of print here so I'm just trying to get rid of some of that I do love all the way the colours work so well together I must admit but anyway, so let's now how many of us, you know, buy these boxes of different things and then just 
and not throwing them away. It would be good if you could use it for your art instead. I think I'd prefer it that way around. I love the fact that all the yellows and everything are shining through there. So just clean this off and then I'll hold it up a bit so you can see what's going on. I think you, when you're doing encaustic art, I think you spend more time cleaning the iron than you actually do doing the art. <laughs> you don't want any of it on there still, it'll ruin your next picture. Right, okay, so let me hold that up so you can see it. You see all the different colours come through. And even though there's a few words coming through, I actually think that adds to it, you know. Um, I've seen some wonderful videos of people doing encaustic art on, and they um, don't do it on the card like this with an art, they do it in different ways. But they actually get pages out of books and things to actually um, stick to it all. I'm going to um, give it a buff up. Is it going to stay on there? Instantly I can see it's a lot shinier than when I did it on the last piece of paper. You've got, I've got lovely sheen there. Can you see that? That is beautiful. That has really shined up lovely. Um, I can't see any little bumps like I did in the last one, which I thought maybe shouldn't have been there. It's actually stayed completely flat as well, where the last piece it actually folded, um, curled a little bit. So no, I personally put that one down as a great success. So now I'm going to use exactly the same colour on the other side, on the plain side. And I'm going to work in a very, very similar way. So this side isn't glossy at all. I put a bit more paint um, wax on than I did on the last one. Um, so you, you, you can almost feel how it's soaking it all up. Um, obviously I've only used one colour there. So um, where the other one you had the yellow coming through which made a nice contrast so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some yellow on put some yellow on again I'll put quite a bit on that I'm going to just start in the middle here, I think. Give the iron a little wiggle. So I actually feel that maybe um, to do that, I should have I should have done the yellow first. Um, no worries, I can grab another piece of card that's similar. Um, and we can try it the other way round afterwards. Um, it looks like it's taking a bit longer to dry. Still a really nice effect, you know. Not everybody likes shine, you know, really, really high gloss shine. So let's give this a, a bit of a buff up and see what happens. Oh. That has actually shined up quite a lot. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I actually think that's not too bad, you know. Um, if you could go in with your other tools. Um, oh, I, I really like, I, I tell you what, I, I want to add some, 
something else there. Oh, what can I add that might help bring out a bit of different colour? Let's try a little bit of red here or pink. It's very hard to tell with these sometimes as to what colour you're actually leaving using. So many different ways you can use your iron. Do, do, do. So I'm just literally up and down. Try to use the lines a bit, sides rather. See, I think that is a classic example of you should start off with the yellow first. Right, okay. Purple is a very, um, very strong colour, definitely. Right, so let's just buff that up again, actually. And I'll put the other colour on it. See what happens. What I like is you can really see the texture on this. <laughs> that is that is really lovely. You could put some glitter or something on that, and that'll come out quite nice. So I think that's worked quite well. I just chose the wrong colours. Um, right, okay. So that's my experiment over with. So now. I'm just going to use ordinary cardboard. Um, we all end up with lots of cardboard, don't we? Especially if you've been ordering online at Christmas time. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off with orange this time. Woo! Get quite a bit on there, right? Yay! See, I can see that this, to me, you would actually use quite a lot. I don't, I don't think that using the cardboard box is going to work too well. You've got some of the colour there, but not an over amount. Um, let's put a, just a little bit of darker colour there. Let's do it over this bit. See, what doesn't help, there's actually lines, folds in the cardboard. Um, so perhaps if I'd used one that didn't have that as much in it, perhaps it would have been better. Hard to get it into them little creases. Try once more. If I give up. Oh, that's a bit better. Okay. I've got a little bit over here that hasn't covered. So let's just do the whoops, do a little bit more on there. a little bit murky but, but you know what sometimes murky is good and if he was actually um, using a stamper or he was going to come in with your tools afterwards um, you could make that work and in these the natural you can't even see the lines there the creases um, in the cardboard actually work would work well as steps or um, waves coming in. Um, I, I think I want to put a bit of yellow up there at the top before I finish this. Let's have a 
I'm going to give it a little bit more. To me, the colours are looking a bit dull, but that could just be the way that I've chosen them. My colour combinations. Okay. So, um, let's buff this one up and see what happens because it's completely matte at the moment. Let's see what happens when I give this a try. Good, straight away, you can see the shine coming through, but you can see the lines coming through as well. But who's to say that you shouldn't have lines? You know, that might work quite well with whatever project is that you're doing. You know, um, I think it's got to be smooth and glossy, does it? And uh, whoops, sorry, I keep knocking the camera. But I can, I can tell that um, you can see the lines there shining through. But as I say, you know, cheap alternative if you want to have a go. If you want to have a go on a big project where the paper is a bit, a little bit expensive, and you've got loads of cardboard hanging around. Give it a go, see what happens. Um, try different kinds of cardboards. It stayed in, in shape, it hasn't warped at all, so that's worked quite well. Okay, so now let's try. Um, so this is the greeting card from the greeting card pack. You get 10 cards and envelopes um, from Hobbycraft. Uh, so let's see. So obviously, you know, you've got to be careful because you, you don't want um, um, to get the ink, the, um, sorry, I'm, I'm losing my words. <laughs> I don't want to get the wax everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of the cheap card and I'm going to put that over the top in hope that then um, if anything goes over the edges, it will actually go on to the here rather than um, underneath. So, um, what colours are we going to use here? We haven't used any greens yet, have we? So, um, let's have a little bit of green. I'm just going to put it on the edge there. And... Um, It doesn't go on as easy and shiny as what the um, the proper encaustic card does. It's doable. Just got to be a bit more inventive with it. That's all. If you had your brush o paints. You could actually, um, or watercolour paints, or um, even acrylic, I suppose, or colouring pencils, pastels. You could do a lovely sky with that. But I'm just using the wax this time. So I'm going to um, just going to put a little bit of this colour on the sky. I don't know why, but I prefer this one for the sky. You probably find that that you you'll have your favourite ones to use. Now you see how that didn't go across at all, did it? No, no, no. It doesn't want to play ball. So let's put a lot more wax on and see if I can. Hmm. Not totally enthralled at the moment. As you look, you can see it's still gone inside, even though I put this underneath. Um, it's a bit bland there at the moment, isn't it? Um, so how about... Um, I'm just going to use it on one side. So let's try this and see what happens. Now... We like going like that, don't we? I think you call it old people. And um, they don't really work on this. Not working too well at all. Um, 
if you were just going to put words on, you know, um, use your stamper to put words on, um, very little saying, or put a sticker on saying happy birthday, or whatever, um, then it'll be fine. But for actually creating a picture, as you can see, I'm struggling here a little bit more. I think it's because of the card is just soaking so much of it up. I personally don't think that I would use the encorset card on um, on 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 this way again. I think I would actually just um, do it on a piece of ordinary encorset art paper and um, and glue it on. Let's give it a shine up anyway. But as you can see, it's sticking to it, so it might just be a case of you know you're just having to have a have a good play about. You know, it's still an interesting background, something that you could use with. Um, still interesting. So now a proper encaustic card okay so this is a proper card this is the one that you buy in a hundred cards for so many pounds uh, cheapest source I've found them is on the internet um, so um, I'm going to repeat from here earlier I think so I shall use some yellow. I'm going to put some yellow on first. And we'll see the difference. It's all shining over. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. So much easier. Went on a lot, lot better. And then um, I used this one, didn't I? Why? Because I love purple. <laughs> but look, see how we like to do this? <laughs> These kind of movements. So much easier when you're actually doing it on the proper card compared to the ones that I did earlier. So much easier. So if you're going to want to really manipulate it, I think then really you are probably better off um, using the proper card let's buff this up so you can see the difference as you can see it's quite plain at the moment so if i buff that up look at that so We have lots of different ones that I've done. You can see that's a bit bent, but you could always put something on to flatten that. I'm sure you can come up with a solution for that. I think when I use the, the yellow side, the shiny side of, of the cereal bar box, um, I think that worked really well. I really like that. Um, I'm not even put off by the fact that I can see some words coming through. I think that has turned out really, really lovely. And that was, that, that was rubbish. That was rubbish. It was just going to be thrown away. The other side, um, I still like this. And I should have done it with the yellow, with the yellow first to put underneath. I'll tell you what, let me um, grab 
another piece of card so I can actually see if that will still work better that way. Um, not over impressed with this one when I did it on the cardboard, but as you saw, I was just working really, really quickly. If you've got a bit of time, then I'm sure you'll be able to work something out. So let's see what if I can, whoops, sorry. Um, I save a lot of boxes. So, right, okay, so I'm just going to rip this one. You know what? Why rip when you've got scissors behind you? <laughs> Should have done a blue Peter. I've got some already just in case. Right, okay. So um again, shiny side. Would have been thrown away anyway, this box. So now I'm gonna do it on this side. So we know the shiny side works. So let's use this side, and this time I'll put the yellow one first. Let's see how that works. I think that is the problem here, you can see straight away, it just doesn't stay yellow, does it? It just doesn't stay yellow. My eyes picked up some of the colour from here, so a little bit of other colour there. So let's try... I want to try and lighten it up a bit. Because the actual effect worked quite well. I thought so anyway. If I give it a really good coverage first in the lighter colours, will that then help when I'm putting on the other colour? See, normally the iron would remelt it and make it easy for you to use it on the rest and it's just it's a difference between ironing a shirt and ironing a, ironing, ironing a tea towel I think <laughs> right okay I'm not going to over clean the iron because I'm going to go with a darker colour now anyway um, so that's what it looks like at the moment Let's see if I can really carry on manipulating it. Similar ways to what I did on the proper encaustic art. Oh, it's a little bit Native American, isn't it? That's what it looks like at the moment. Very abstract. Ab abstract. <laughs> abstract. Abstract. <laughs> so let's give it a buff and see what happens. Do, 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 do. I can see so much in that. Um, again. It has worked, but it's all right for a background. But I don't think I personally would do that again. I would do it on that side, but I wouldn't do it on the unshiny side. 
and I believe all experiments you should have lots of different stuff so here I'm actually going to now use proper this is the proper encaustic sheet costing me 70p okay so let's see if the difference is so great that it's worth that 70p right so said earlier we'll start with the yellow i'm going to try and keep, keep it in the similar colors to what i've done there so i'm going to get some yellow get good coverage because it's a bit of paper and i'm going to put that willy nearly over okay put a little bit more i really like the way that that purple shone through. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to put a little bit of this here. I'm only putting it straight onto the iron because I can see that most of it has actually come off onto the paper. The reason why I'm picking up other colours here is picking it up off of here. I should have put another bit of paper underneath. So that was that was a silly Janet moment. See if that helps. Right, let's see if I can clean up a bit. Oof. I'm not trying to be a corset art genius of the year or anything. I'm just doing this as an experiment on different kinds of paper. Already that feels really, really nice. And now I'm going to come in with that purple as I did on that one. Hopefully not burning my fingers, I got a little bit close that time. Not bad you know, more times I've done it, I think that's the first time I've ever done that. Right, okay, so now I'm just going to go like this. Ooh. Gosh, we've got some exciting things happening here. Look at that. See, you can carry on working. Never has to stop. And keep going and this is the difference when you're using the proper card that is shiny which I also believe doesn't have to be in course to art paper I really do feel that you would get away with this with a cereal box or something like that that has got shine on one side. So I keep knocking the camera there. Gonna... Add some, some more fun. If you go too much, it becomes very murky and crazy. But... So, let's clean this iron up. And then we'll get a bit of paper, kitchen paper. And we'll give this a buff up. I will take individual pictures afterwards saying what it was that I used for them. So out of all the different ones that I've done here today, got quite a few different ones here. I personally I'm very pleased I have done this. <laughs> um, to me, the top ones that I've done here are the two that were done on proper encaustic paper, followed very closely 
by the other side of a cereal box, the shiny side. Definitely would do that again. Definitely would. Um, the other side, it's okay if you just want to create a background with texture. That's absolutely fine. Um, this is the one which I did on the cheap card that you just buy in cheap shops. So you can see little dots in there and everything. Might have just been the way I was doing it. Um, I would definitely try this one again as well. Uh, when you consider the expense of the same piece of paper, 70p, which is hard to source as well, the art shop actually had to order it in specially for me. Um, yeah, I think I would actually um, use this again and have a little bit more fun with that to see what else I could do with it, because I, I, I quite like that. But for me, the closest one to encaustic paper of all the ones I've used today was the other side of a cereal box. So there's my experiment. Have a go and let me know how you get on. Thank you for watching.